In the soft light of dawn, a time when the world whispers its secrets to those who rise to listen, solitude stands as a timeless sanctuary. This daybreak solitude is not the hollow echo of isolation, it is a fulsome chorus, a symphony of self played in the key of tranquility. As we embark on this journey through the Stoic mind, we are not merely retracing the philosophical steps of ancient sages, we are uncovering the enduring essence of a serene spirit that has whispered through the ages. Stoicism, a philosophy that blossomed under the Athenian sky, is more than a set of teachings, it is a way of being. Zeno of Sidium, its founder, did not discriminate in his assembly. His philosophy was a common ground where all could stand, a ground where virtue was not born of status but of wisdom. Stoicism teaches that the highest good is not wrought from the riches of circumstance but crafted from the riches of character. The wise, those artisans of the soul, sculpt their lives in accordance with nature's law, embracing fate not as a foe but as a friend, each event a thread in the grand tapestry of existence. Solitude, often cast in the role of a specter by those who misunderstand its nature, is in truth a golden thread in the stoic tapestry. It is not an empty space to be filled with the chatter of company but a sacred space where the self can expand, filling the void with contemplation and insight. Solitude is the canvas upon which the Stoic paints their virtues in the hues of reflection and resilience. In this space, we engage in a dialogue that transcends time, a conversation that echoes the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus. As we tread the painted porch, the Stoa, where Stoics of old would gather, let us absorb the serenity that the practice of solitude can bestow. It is in the quiet communion with the self that one discovers an inner citadel, impervious to the sieges of external chaos. The stoa becomes not just a physical walkway but a metaphorical pathway to inner strength. In the embrace of solitude, the stoic mind finds clarity. Each moment alone is an opportunity to converse with the ages, to listen to the silent wisdom that reverberates through time. It is here, in this fortress of fortitude, that the Stoic learns the art of inner peace, navigating life's tumultuous waves with the steadiness of a ship set firmly against the current, moving with purpose and poise towards the distant shore of a well-lived life. This solitude is not a retreat from the world but a deeper engagement with it. It is a state of presence, a profound attentiveness to the inner workings of one's own mind and the subtle rhythms of the natural world. The Stoic, in their solitude, is both student and teacher, pupil and philosopher, ever learning the art of living, a living that is measured not by the breaths one takes, but by the moments that take one's breath away. And so, as we set forth on this exploration of Stoicism and solitude, let us hold this thought close, solitude is the soil in which the Stoic's wisdom takes root, grows, and ultimately flourishes. It is the silent space in which the music of the mind is composed, the quietude where the soul's symphony is conducted. Within this realm of reflective repose, the Stoic mind finds its most profound power and peace. As the Stoic kindles the flame of introspection, the light cast is one of revelation and truth. In the solitude of thought, the shadows of our uncertainties begin to take shape, allowing us to confront and understand them. For the Stoic, the journey to self-knowledge is akin to the journey of a deep-sea diver, plunging into the depths of the psyche, not to disturb the waters but to become acquainted with the currents that direct the course of one's character. This profound self-knowledge is not mere navel-gazing, it is an active, relentless quest to unearth the bedrock of our nature. Just as Seneca, the statesman and philosopher, reflected upon the virtues and vices that play upon the human condition, we too, in our quietude, reflect upon the elements that constitute our essence. This self-reflection is the Stoic's laboratory where hypotheses of the self are tested against the unyielding laws of nature and reason. Marcus Aurelius, whose reflections penned in his meditations have served as beacons of wisdom, invites us to visit thyself, a profound invitation to embark on the most important odyssey, the journey inward. This internal expedition requires us to navigate through the straits of our fears, around the peninsulas of our desires, and over the mountains of our doubts. The compass that guides us is our capacity for reason, the same reason that is the divine spark within us, according to Stoic belief. 
In the sanctum of solitude, our mind's eye turns towards the inner self, a landscape vast and varied. The stoic self-scrutiny is not for the faint of heart, it demands courage to face the full panorama of our inner complexities. As we traverse this terrain, we uncover the myriad facets of our identity, the roles we play, the beliefs we hold, the emotions that stir in the undercurrents of our thoughts. The Stoic uses solitude as a crucible for purification, a place where the ore of the self is smelted, and impurities are skimmed away, revealing the pure metal of our character. This process is deliberate and thoughtful. It requires us to hold up the mirror of truth to our actions and intentions, to align our behaviors with our professed values. The quietude of solitude thus becomes a canvas where the portrait of the self is drawn and redrawn, each line a stroke of understanding, each shade a layer of depth. The Stoic finds in this self-portraiture not vanity but clarity, the kind that can only come from the honest appraisal of one's own nature. In the hallowed halls of introspection, the Stoic finds the keys to self-mastery. For it is only through knowing oneself, through charting the inner cosmos with its stars of strength and its nebulae of weakness, that one can navigate the outer cosmos with wisdom and virtue. This pursuit of profound self-knowledge is a lifelong endeavor, one that is continually refined as we evolve and grow. It is a testament to the Stoic's dedication to the art of living, a commitment to ensuring that life is not just experienced, but understood at its deepest level. Autarky, the venerable Stoic bastion of self-sufficiency, is not an innate gift but a skill forged in the flames of discipline and introspection. It is a virtue that is both the journey and the destination, a state of being that Stoics like Epictetus regarded as the pinnacle of freedom. For the Stoic, to be self-sufficient is to possess the kingdom of oneself, a realm where the individual reigns supreme over their choices and reactions. The development of autarky is akin to the cultivation of a garden. Just as the gardener tills the soil, plants the seeds, and nurtures the growth, so too does the stoic tend to the garden of the mind. Each thought is a seedling of experience, the careful attention we pay to our reactions and beliefs is the sunlight and water that allow these seedlings to flourish into sturdy plants of wisdom. Epictetus, with his piercing insight, taught that our disturbances come not from the events of the world but from our perceptions of them. It is a radical empowerment that places the reins of control firmly in our own hands. In the tranquil solitude of our inner sanctum, we are the architects of our own mental landscape. We decide which thoughts to cultivate and which to weed out, knowing that a well-tended mind brings forth the fruits of peace and equanimity. The Stoic's pursuit of autarky is not a path of isolation but one of selective engagement. It is about recognizing that while we may not control external events, we have absolute dominion over our internal responses. This recognition is the fertile ground in which the roots of Stoic self-sufficiency are anchored. The external world may batter us with storms of fate, but like the oak, the Stoic draws strength from deep within, standing firm in their convictions and serenity. This emotional sovereignty is a dance with destiny, where solitude becomes not a lonely road but a liberating voyage to the core of one's being. Each solitary step is a deliberate move in the choreography of self-mastery. The Stoic in solitude is not abandoned but empowered, not adrift but anchored in the profound depths of their own psyche. The development of autarky is, therefore, a conscious evolution from dependence on the external to a reliance on the internal. It is an affirmation of the Stoic belief that true contentment and freedom come not from external acquisitions but from internal harmony and the disciplined stewardship of one's own mind. In this dance with destiny, the Stoic learns to embrace each twist and turn, each rise and fall, with grace and resolve. For in the heart of the tempest, within the eye of the storm, lies the Stoic's tranquil center, a center where self-sufficiency and peace reside, unassailable and eternal. In the realm of solitude, we encounter our emotions as if they were characters in a play, each vying for the lead role on the stage of our psyche. The Stoic, however, does not sit as a passive audience member but rather assumes the role of a discerning director, seeking to understand the motive and message behind each emotional performance. Emotions in Stoicism are not enemies to be vanquished, but rather natural responses to be examined. 
They are the raw material from which wisdom can be extracted. The Stoic sage knows that to feel is to be human, yet to be governed by feelings is to be enslaved. Epictetus, with his pragmatic wisdom, counsels us to align our desires with reality, to want not for the world to conform to our wishes, but for our wishes to align with the world as it unfolds. This alignment diminishes the friction between expectation and reality, the very friction that so often ignites the flames of discontent. Facing emotions is akin to navigating treacherous waters, one must recognize the currents and respect the power of the waves. The Stoic does not seek to still the waters by force of will but to understand their patterns and to sail with skillful harmony. Each emotion is charted, its origins traced, its power acknowledged but its course directed by the seasoned hand of reason. In solitude, the Stoic is presented with the opportunity to dissect emotions, to lay them bare upon the table of inquiry, and to examine them with the precise instrument of Stoic reason. This dissection is not a cold, detached process but a compassionate understanding that seeks to reveal the complex interplay of internal and external forces that give rise to feelings. By understanding the anatomy of our emotions, the Stoic learns to respond not with reflex but with reflection, not with impulse but with insight. The solitude of self is thus transformed into a laboratory for emotional alchemy, where base reactions are transmuted into the gold of discernment. Here, the Stoic learns the art of emotional equanimity, a balance that does not suppress the waves of feeling but rides them with the poise of a skilled mariner, each emotion a gust that fills the sails of the soul, propelling it forward on the voyage of self-mastery. This Stoic confrontation with emotion is not a battle but a dialogue, a conversation between the self and the essence of what it means to be alive. In this dialogue, the Stoic cultivates a profound understanding of the human condition, recognizing that while emotions are universal, the power to navigate them with wisdom is the hallmark of the virtuous life. The practice of facing emotions in solitude is not an end in itself but a means to a greater end, the development of a resilient and responsive character, equipped to face not only the tempests within but also the storms without. It is in this quietude that the Stoic forges the inner tranquility that becomes the bedrock of a life lived with purpose and peace. In the tranquil halls of solitude, the Stoic is seated upon the throne of contemplation, where decisions are crafted not from the noisy marketplaces of external opinion, but from the quiet corridors of inner truth. The sovereignty of decision-making is one of the greatest powers bestowed upon humankind, and the Stoic approaches this task with the reverence it deserves. Seneca, the esteemed philosopher-statesman, understood well the paradox of human action, that our fears often inflate the difficulty of our endeavors. In the stillness of solitude, these fears are faced, understood, and stripped of their illusions. The Stoic uses this clarity to approach decisions with a mind unclouded by doubt and distraction. The act of decision-making, therefore, becomes a sacred ritual in the temple of the self. Here, the Stoic is both the high priest and the supplicant, seeking guidance from the oracle within. The clutter and clamor of the external world fade away, allowing the Stoic to hear the whispers of wisdom that often get drowned out in the cacophony of daily life. In this consecrated space, the Stoic deliberates with a clarity that can only come from alignment with one's core principles. Each decision is weighed not on the scales of public opinion but on the balance of personal virtue. The Stoic knows that the true compass for decision-making lies within, guided by the north star of one's most profound convictions. The solitude that Stoicism cherishes is a crucible for pure thought, a haven where decisions are refined and purified of impurities. The Stoic understands that a decision made in haste is like an untempered sword, prone to fracture upon first strike. But a decision forged in the contemplative fires of solitude is strong, resilient, and true. Thus, the Stoic emerges from the quietude of decision-making with a sense of certainty and resolve. The choices made in solitude carry with them the imprint of authenticity, the mark of a self that has been consulted and heard. The decisions are the embodiment of the Stoic's innermost values, a reflection of a self that is both the sculptor and the marble, shaping life's course with the deliberate strokes of wisdom. In the art of decision-making, the Stoic finds not just the path to action, 
but the pathway to a life lived with intention and integrity. It is here, in the serene depths of solitude, that the Stoic maps out the journey of a life that is not left to chance, but is consciously crafted, decision by sovereign decision. Before we delve deeper into the Stoics' cultivation of resilience, allow me to extend an invitation to join our philosophical odyssey. If you find solace and strength in these reflections, consider subscribing to the Philosophy for Winners channel. Like the philosophers of old who gathered at the Stoa to share wisdom, let us build a community here. If this video resonates with you, please like and share it, so that others may walk with us on this path of Stoic enlightenment. Now, let us return to the heart of Stoicism, resilience. It is in the quietude of our own company that we are afforded the clearest view of our inner strength. The solitude that some may shun is the very environment in which the Stoic finds their mettle tested and tempered. The Stoics regarded every obstacle not as a deterrent but as an opportunity for growth. Marcus Aurelius, whose wisdom has traversed centuries, taught us to find fortitude in the face of adversity. For what obstructs our path can also pave it, transforming barriers into bridges with the alchemy of perspective. In the silence of solitude, we listen to the rhythm of our own heartbeat, the drum of endurance that beats a steady cadence through the trials we face. Like nature, that grand and patient sculptor, we learn the art of resilience not through force but through persistence. The Stoic is akin to the ancient tree whose roots grip the earth firmly, not fighting the storm but swaying with it, drawing strength from each bend and sway. This resilience we speak of is not a wall that shuts out the world but a citadel that stands within it, offering sanctuary and strength. It is constructed in the moments of quiet determination, in the hours of reflection that follow defeat, and in the decision to rise again with the dawn. Each labor that Hercules faced was not just a trial of strength but a testament to the human capacity to overcome. So too, the Stoic sees each hardship as a labor of the spirit, a challenge to be met with the same resolve. The Stoic's resilience is a tapestry woven from threads of tenacity, each strand representing a trial weathered, a lesson learned, a victory over the vicissitudes of fate. In embracing solitude, we embrace the practice of resilience. We understand that the art of standing firm is not about resisting change but about embodying it. Like the tide that shapes the shore, our resilience is not loud or sudden but a quiet force, constant and unwavering, shaping us into beings of depth and complexity. Thus, the Stoic walks through life not as one invulnerable to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune but as one who knows that the greatest strength lies in the ability to endure, adapt, and advance. The fortress of the soul is ever-expanding, its foundations deepening with each solitary moment of challenge faced and risen from, a testament to the indomitable spirit within. In the silent theater of solitude, the Stoic becomes attuned to the subtleties of life's simple symphony, the rustle of leaves, the coolness of stone, the play of shadows at twilight. These experiences, so easily overlooked in the cacophony of modern existence, are treasured in the Stoic's world for their unadorned beauty and unspoken truths. Seneca, whose letters are filled with meditations on the virtues of a simple life, implores us to find wealth in frugality, to understand that the greatest riches stem from the appreciation of what is readily at hand. He knew that luxury often distracts, while simplicity has the power to enlighten. In the embrace of less, we find more, a paradox that is quintessentially stoic. The appreciation of the simple things is a conscious return to the essence of living. It is the Stoic's way of rooting oneself in the core of existence, stripping away the veneer that society so often deems necessary. In solitude, this truth becomes self-evident, the extraneous falls away, leaving a landscape where every small wonder can be seen with fresh eyes. As the rose teaches by example, displaying its beauty without ostentation, the Stoic learns to recognize the inherent value in simplicity. The rose does not strive, it simply is. And in its being, it becomes a symbol of the Stoic ideal, tranquility in self-sufficiency, elegance in simplicity, wisdom in silence. Solitude thus becomes a canvas where life's simplest pleasures are painted in vivid hues. The Stoic savors these moments, each a quiet celebration of life's understated splendor. 
The morning dew on a single blade of grass, the quiet companionship of a book, the satisfaction of a task performed with care and attention, these are the threads from which the Stoic weaves their tapestry of contentment. In this practice of appreciation, the Stoic's life becomes a mosaic of these simple joys, each piece a testament to the richness that comes not from possession but from perception, not from abundance but from awareness. The simple things, once noticed, become the milestones marking the path to a fulfilled life, a life where each moment is enough, a life that is full not in spite of its simplicity, but because of it. The Stoic mind, in solitude, finds harmony in the elemental, a resonance with the rhythms of nature that speak of a deeper understanding of the universe and our place within it. This appreciation is a quiet revolution against the clamor for more, a peaceful protest that declares, in the gentlest of whispers, that here, now, and in the simple things, there is a world of abundance waiting to be recognized and revered. The internal dialogue that unfolds in the quiet recesses of solitude is a hallmark of the Stoic practice. It is the sacred conversation that one has with oneself, a dialogue that transcends the mundane and touches upon the profound. The Stoic, in their solitude, becomes both the inquirer and the respondent, the student and the teacher, the judge and the advocate. Epictetus, with his piercing insight, understood the power of perception over circumstance. He taught that our disturbances arise not from external events but from the judgments we make about them. This internal dialogue is where we hold these judgments up to the light, examining them with the keen eye of a philosopher. In the silence that solitude affords, the Stoic's internal dialogue is free to roam, exploring the landscape of the psyche. Here, the mind can question its own assumptions, challenge its preconceptions, and dissect its responses. It is a rigorous process, demanding honesty and courage, for it requires one to confront the self at its most vulnerable. This conversation is not a monologue but a multifaceted debate, a symposium of the soul where different aspects of the self deliberate over the right course of action. It is a constructive process, one that builds the architecture of character, brick by introspective brick. Each thought, each reflection, each moment of self-questioning adds to the structure of the self, creating a resilient edifice that can withstand the tremors of fate. The Stoic uses this internal dialogue not only to question but also to affirm, to reinforce the values that define their being. It is in this internal senate that virtues are championed and vices are vanquished. The Stoic mind, in its quest for wisdom, becomes a gardener of the intellect, cultivating thoughts as one would tender plants, nurturing the wholesome and uprooting the harmful. In fostering this internal dialogue, the Stoic is engaged in an act of continual renewal. It is a process of mental and spiritual refinement, a perpetual quest for a deeper understanding of oneself and the world. This dialogue is the crucible in which the Stoic's character is forged, where the metal of the mind is heated and hammered into the sword of discernment. The practice of engaging in internal dialogue is not a withdrawal from the world but a preparation for engaging with it more fully. It is the means by which the Stoic prepares to meet the external with a sense of internal unity and clarity. The solitude that might seem like Isolation is, in truth, a vibrant form of introspection, a place where the Stoic can commune with the great thinkers of the past, the present, and perhaps even the future. Through this internal dialogue, the Stoic emerges not only with a clearer sense of self but also with a greater capacity for empathy and understanding. For in understanding oneself, one begins to understand others. The internal dialogue thus becomes a bridge to the external world, a means of connecting with others in a manner that is thoughtful, considered, and deeply human. The fostering of internal dialogue is a gift of solitude, a practice that transforms the quiet spaces of life into theaters of philosophical exploration, where the self can embark upon the most important conversation it will ever have, the conversation with itself. Atop the mountain's crest, the Stoic finds solace, not in isolation, but in unity with the grandeur that enfolds them. The expansive sky, the distant horizon, the earth beneath their feet, all speak the same silent language of existence. For the Stoic, nature is not a backdrop to human activity but a living, breathing canvas upon which the story of the cosmos is etched. 
The Stoics, with their profound understanding of nature, recognize that we are but a part of a larger whole, a fragment of the cosmos, and in knowing this, they found a deep sense of belonging. In solitude, this connection deepens, for it is in the quiet moments that the subtle whispers of the universe are best heard. Nature's symphony is indeed intricate, a composition of elements and cycles, of birth, growth, decay, and rebirth. To attune oneself to this symphony is to understand the rhythms of life itself. The Stoic, in silent observation, learns the lessons that nature imparts, the patience of the seasons, the resilience of life, the humility of the human experience in the face of the vastness of the cosmos. Zeno, the progenitor of Stoicism, found in the embrace of nature a kinship with the world. The cosmos does not speak with words but communicates through the very essence of being. It is through this communion that the Stoic perceives the interconnectedness of all things. The very atoms that comprise the mountains and the seas are kindred to those that form the human heart. In the solitude of nature, the Stoic is never truly alone. They are part of a larger dialogue, a cosmic discourse that transcends the limits of time and space. The solitude becomes a conduit, a means of touching the infinite, of stretching the soul's capacity to encompass the eternal. The Stoic understands that this connection with nature and the cosmos is not an escape from reality but a deeper immersion into it. By stripping away the superfluous, they are able to perceive the fundamental truths that bind all existence. This is the Stoic's pilgrimage, a journey not outward into the world but inward into the self, and through the self, outward into the universe. The mountain's peak, the Stoic's perch, becomes a place of revelation, where the vastness of the cosmos is mirrored by the depth of the inner world. Here, the Stoic stands, a solitary figure not confined by the body but expanded by the spirit, reaching out to the cosmos with the tendrils of their consciousness. This connection, this profound understanding of nature and the cosmos, is the Stoic's gift of solitude. It is a reminder that even in our deepest solitude, we are inextricably linked to the fabric of everything that is, was, and will be. Our solitude is not an abyss but a bridge to the eternal, a pathway to the profound, where the self and the cosmos meet and merge in the silent dance of existence. In the sanctity of solitude, the Stoic embarks on the noblest of all endeavors, the cultivation of virtue and the pursuit of inner tranquility. Here, within the fortress of the self, away from the din of societal expectations and distractions, the Stoic meticulously forges the character steel, tempering it with the fires of introspection and the cool resolve of reason. Virtue, for the Stoics, is the only good, and its pursuit is the essence of a life well lived. It is not an accolade to be flaunted but a quiet strength to be nurtured. In the stillness of solitude, the Stoic reflects upon the four cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance, each an indispensable compass point on the journey to the self's betterment. Marcus Aurelius, in the meditative musings of his Meditations, illustrates the Stoic ideal of tranquility not as a retreat from the world but as an equanimity that is maintained within it. His words offer solace and guidance, teaching us that tranquility is not the absence of chaos but the presence of peace amidst it. In solitude, the Stoic learns to welcome each challenge as an opportunity to practice virtue, to transform every obstacle into a stepping stone towards greater moral elevation. It is a process of continual refinement, where each thought and action is examined for its alignment with the Stoic principles. The cultivation of virtue is an art, and solitude the atelier where the Stoic's moral vision is realized. Each moment of reflection, each conscious choice, each act of will is a brushstroke on the canvas of character. With patience and persistence, the Stoic shapes their inner landscape, sculpting a spirit adorned with the beauty of ethical excellence. Inner tranquility is the masterpiece of the Stoic life, a state of serene composure that can weather the storms of fortune. It is achieved not through avoidance but through acceptance, not by resisting the vicissitudes of life but by meeting them with an undisturbed spirit. The Stoic, grounded in virtue, remains centered, an unmoved mover amidst the flux of the external world. This tranquility is not a passive surrender but an active engagement with life, 
an affirmation of one's ability to remain steadfast and true to one's principles, regardless of circumstances. It is the quiet confidence that comes from knowing that one's happiness is not contingent upon the whims of fate but is a state of mind to be cultivated and maintained from within. The cultivation of virtue and inner tranquility is the Stoic's lifelong quest, a path that is illuminated by the light of reason and paved with the stones of discipline and perseverance. In the quietude of solitude, the Stoic finds the space to grow, to expand the soul's horizon, and to bask in the light of moral clarity. Let us, the viewers of this philosophical journey, take inspiration from the Stoics. Let us seek out moments of solitude to reflect upon our own virtues, to find our center of tranquility, and to polish the jewel of character that lies within each of us. And as we do so, let us remember to subscribe to Philosophy for Winners, to like and share this video, for in the sharing of wisdom, we find one of the greatest virtues of all, generosity. Remember, dear viewers, that in the cultivation of virtue and the quest for inner tranquility, we are not alone. We walk in the footsteps of the great Stoic philosophers, and in our own pursuit of Aridi, we honor their legacy and continue their noble dialogue across the ages. As the final embers of our discourse fade into the twilight of shared understanding, let us take with us the wisdom of the Stoics, their indomitable spirit, their unwavering pursuit of virtue, and their tranquil mastery over the tumult of existence. May the lessons of solitude, the symphony of nature, and the quest for inner tranquility resonate within you, long after the echoes of this video fade. Carry forth the Stoic's torch, illuminating your path with reason, fortifying your spirit with courage, and adorning your life with the simple grace of contentment. Before we part ways on this digital stoa, I extend an invitation to you, not merely to ponder the words you have heard but to enact them in the theater of your life. Let the philosophy we have explored together be not just a spectator's sport but a practitioner's virtue. If the seeds of wisdom have found fertile ground in your mind, if the Stoic's path appeals to the nobler aspirations of your heart, then I entreat you, subscribe to the Philosophy for Winners channel. Like this video if it has, in any measure, contributed to the enrichment of your understanding. Share it with others, for in the act of sharing, we multiply the good we possess. Farewell, fellow seekers of wisdom. May our paths converge again in the pursuit of knowledge, in the embrace of virtue, and in the cultivation of a life replete with meaning and serenity. Until that auspicious moment, let us each walk the path of philosophy with dignity and determination, for in the words of Seneca, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Subscribe, like, share, and join us once more on Philosophy for Winners. For now, we bid you adieu, not as an end, but as the beginning of your own stoic journey towards a tranquil heart and a virtuous life.